Welcome to the Beer and Pretzel Podcast. My name is Austin, and today we will be doing a pirate-themed adventure in the land of Pirate Borg, the spin-off of Morkborg. I'm joined here today by my players and my co-hosts. Becky. The name is Yancy Sparrow, but land lovers know me as Brad. The land lovers also know me as Travis, but my name is... I forgot my name. Why do you give your character a name you can't pronounce, Travis? It Yar. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I can You're pronounce it. Pirates. I just can't remember what. Deranged. What, okay, what is your character name? Uh, Durain. Durain, okay. Durain. And Becky, what I is your pirate name? I didn't realize we were doing our pirate names. <laughs> I'm Iron Anchor Molly. All we're, right. We weren't doing the pirate names. I was, just did a thing. Oh, you Brad said a, a trend. Brad yeah. said a trend, but he was the second person to go, so I look like an idiot. In today's episode, we're going to be going into the world of Pirate Borg. Uh, today, I want to do a some kind of Mork Borg game. I was actually, we haven't been around to playing Mork Borg yet, which is kind of one of the like big indie games out there in the RPG community. But it's right not now. a beer and pretzel. It's not like a one shot. It is a one shot, yeah. Most, most of the adventures are designed to play one night, and half the time your character will die by the end of the session. I was going to say, is it because you die? Uh, part of it, yeah. But no, most of them are designed for one-shots, traditionally. Because when we did, we did it as like a mini campaign. No, we didn't. We played it as one session. Did With we? my elf? Yeah, we played it one night. We played for like three hours, and that was it. But we, our character survived. Yeah, we never played it again. But we could have. But we didn't play anymore. But that we could have. But we we did a set adventure within one period of time but that makes it a one shot. But, but you could have. We could have made another you adventure with the make, same yeah, character. You can make a campaign if you want, fight, but a lot fight, of the adventures fight, are designed fight. to play over one okay, period Okay, but this, time. I think, was a venture you made yourself or something. I, I, can't I didn't make it up. Anyway, we survived. That's all I'm saying. If we survived, we could have carried on. Okay. We have different definitions about one shot is, but it doesn't matter. The point is, is that... Uh, Today, I want to do Mork Borg, but it was a nice warm day out today. And I was like, you know what? It might be interesting to do something tropical, but what can we do? If I were numbered and if people have not listened to it, a couple months ago, I did a interview with the creator of Pirate Borg when his Kickstarter was out. And he raised over, I forgot how much it was. I think it was over $200,000 for this game. Quite a bit. And yeah, Pirate Borg is about to come out in a couple months. And I figured, hey... I got the PDF for it. We should play it. Uh, we can get that pirate theme in there. A little bit of a tropical feel. We have different pirate themed and tropical drinks today. I made my uh, tropical drink, which is like a blue carousel with uh, coconut rum and pineapple juice. And then Brad went on more point with the pirate theme. Brad, talk to us about what drink you made for us today. Okay. Uh, today I made a traditional grog. So it is dark rum with water, brown sugar, and uh, half a squeezed lime in each cup. And what do you guys think about Brad's drink, the grog? I like it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good. definitely not as tasty as the one you made, Austin, but I like it for the historical value. Yeah. I like that. Yes. Um, I actually like the taste more than Austin's because I think Austin's a bit too sugary. Oh, <laughs> no, I like the coconut, the blue coconut. It's really good. Well, it is a little strong, though. Maybe because Becky, Becky mixed mine with half of the brown rum, but... Yes. <laughs> That's uh, true. She did make you the stronger one. But Oops. Yeah, so Brad, so do you want to tell us a little bit about the history of Grog? Sure. So it started, um, sailors in the Navy were given a rum ration every day. And um, a lot of them would keep their ration and save it up. And then once they had like a lot of rum, they would just get absolutely wasted. Mm. So to prevent them from saving it, um, the... Uh, they started mixing it with water, so they had to drink it then. Um, it had the added benefit of theoretically uh, helping purify the water. Also, once they added the lime and sugar to make it taste better, it also helped prevent scurvy. Yeah, and most of this is water, and that's because back then you said... They wanted to dilute it a little bit so people just wouldn't get trashed on the boat. It was kind of punishment from the way that the sailors originally did it. But I bet, like, the the pirates who came from the Navy and took the tradition of sailors drinking rum, cut down on the water or even cut it out completely. So it was just, like, rum and sugar and lime juice. They yeah. might have left yeah. some rum in. But, yeah, no, it's pretty good. So we got two different drinks here. So we're going to get a little toasty. We're going to play some pirate board. There's also a traditional call for uh, grog, which I'm going to do right now. That sure. is uh, 
I say, up spirits. Stand fast, the Holy Ghost. Stand fast, the Holy Ghost. Stand fast, the Holy Ghost. All right. So I might call that again later. If it's ever appropriate in character. Yeah. I'll expect all three of you to remember that. I, me and Travis both had to wait for Brett and Becky on that because we forgot. We were over this like 10 minutes ago. We were over this like 10 minutes ago. We forgot already. Yeah. That's why I did it as a like one, two, three. Yeah. (laughs) It looked kind of official, but yeah. yeah, But now I ratted us, so it doesn't look as cool. Anyway, we're going to play some Pirate Borg today. I'm excited to do that. This is our first Mork Borg like game. Um, at some point, we'll play the real Morkborg. If it may, at some point, we'll play Cyborg, which is, like, the biggest Morkborg game to come out right after Morkborg is the uh, future cyberpunk world of Morkborg and turned into a cybernet, uh world. Pretty cool game. These games have terrific art. They're all about the heavily stylization with rules like rules and also making just more of a brutal game to go through. This isn't your mama's D&D. This is old school OSR type shit. Did you say Cyborg? Yeah. That's a really cool name. That actually is It better. works so perfect. It does. That actually sounds better than Morkborg even. Yeah, it does. And Pyroborg. Yeah. It sounds better than both. Yeah, yeah. no, Pir- Morkborg is like, okay, that's a weird word. Pirate Borg is like, that just sounds uncomfortable. Yeah. Cyborg, <laughs> that's a badass name. And it's Cy underscore Borg. That's pretty cool. It looks really cool. And the game like layout design is beautiful. But My hard copy is coming in a month or two, and we will play it once it gets in. It's a great game. I'm so excited to play it. But we're starting first with Pirate Borg because it's the summer. We said, why not? So let's get into it. So while I'm setting up the adventure, guys, we start... This campaign, or at least this one shot, on a ship. You guys are basic uh, shipmates. Basic bitches. Yes, the basic <laughs> bitches. Basic pirates. <laughs> basic pirates. You know, aren't captains or anything like that. But maybe in time you will be. And right now, you guys are stuck in the middle of a storm. Rain is out there. Thunderstorms cooking. And you guys are below deck with the rest of the crew. You guys get together because you're the newcomers on this ship, and you guys form a small bond. And this is a point where your characters get to introduce each other to each other. And also, for our audience and myself, because I know a little bit about you guys, but I want to know more. So, what do your characters know about each other? Let's do an introduction of you guys, kind of in character, but also, you know, a little bit out of character before we get into the adventure. I guess let's start over here with so, Becky. What everybody knows about me is that my name is Iron Anchor Molly. You can call me a Molly if you want to. I am a bit brutish, uh, missing an eye, as you know, and I always carry around my pet cat. It's actually a rat, and I have called him Mr. Whiskers, and you cannot convince me that he is a rat. He is a cat in my mind. So, you know, maybe you have a couple screws loose. You are a pirate, so... I'm a pirate, You whatever. wouldn't be a good pirate if you didn't have at least one or two screws loose. Yeah. Uh, Yancy Sparrow is quite the rep scallion. He's uh, good at drinking grog, and uh, in fact, he's known as a bit of a lush. Um, but he's really good looking, and... Thank goodness for that, because everything else in his life is terrible. <laughs> I've got, uh, my stats are negative one, zero, negative three, negative three, zero. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> for strength, agility, presence, uh, toughness, and spirit. So your high stat is a single zero. Correct. No, I have two zeros now. <laughs> okay, so that's So two nice. zeros is his high um, stat. I'm wearing uh, the ragtag clothing of a commoner. I don't even have a hat. But I do have a bucket... My trusty bucket serves many a roll. I've got a pipe and some tobacco, a bottle of fine rum, my lock picking kit, and a jar of squid guts. And uh, I have a thing for eating rats, so Mr. Whiskers might be in danger. You better stay away from my Mr. Whiskers. <laughs> I, the voices tell me, the voices compel me to eat the rats. At least you won't go hungry on a ship. That's good. There are plenty of rats to eat. Yeah. They're going down, though, by the day, one at a time at least. Yeah, because we no longer need a cat on the ship because we have our own cat that catches them. Uh, Becky, what was your character's name again? Iron Anchor Molly. See, I'm not going to remember that. I'm just going to remember Mr. Whiskers. 
Mr. Whiskers. And that's why we're friends, is because I have a keen interest in Mr. Whiskers. <laughs> Suspicious. Backup food. Oh, uh, D Rain. Or Aaron. I forget how I pronounce this. Trust, you got to pick names you can actually pronounce, man. I was trying to be cool. It didn't work out in my favor. <laughs> yeah, it definitely did not. Um, All right, Dorain. What is your character's bet? Uh, I might be insane. Who knows? Are we not all insane? At least a little bit. Um, my face might or may not, may or may not be covered in bugs. That have mm. called it its their home. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know how. But that's you know life. Yeah. Um, I'm. My stats aren't great, but they're better than some people. <laughs> They're better than Brad's, like, what, you had two negative three stats? Yeah, I don't have a negative three currently. That's good. I don't even have an, Oh, I do have one negative two. Okay. Um, I'm... I'm kind of tough. I'm pretty good as a sharpshooter. I, I like guns, even though my musket takes, like, two days to reload. Mm -hmm. You know? I, I, can, I can deal with that. Um... And my one prize possession is I have a blueprint to create a new ship. Not that I'll ever use that because I can't build a ship, but I have the blueprints for it. Huh. And what is your character's... Some of you guys had, like, special, uh, like, negative traits for your characters that you guys rolled upon. What is your guys' uh, traits or maybe background history that you guys maybe learned from each other through a couple days of uh, friendship on the high seas. So my my past, as you all know, was that I was a cultist in the cult of Cthulhu. But I turned away from that for pirating, and I am actually a much better brute with a, a toughness of plus four. Damn. This is the best stat. <laughs> Everything else kind of sucks. I got a plus one in strength, but, you know, I don't need to be the face when I'm missing an eye. How many exactly. hit points? Uh, should we should we discuss um, my hit point arrangement, Austin? Yeah, sure. What is that? Okay, so uh, Becky, how many hit points do you have? Thirteen. Travis, how many hit points do you have? Five, which is actually high for a more core <laughs> type I, game. I have one hit point, <laughs> but since I'm the drunken lush, and it's in my stats like three or four times, and I even have the uh, special ability around drinking grog. Austin is permitted that since I only have one hit point, if I'm to die at any time, if somebody can pour a shot of rum in my mouth in real life, I can be revived. There we go. So Brad has this little ability to basically get out of harm's way, although he's doing not only in the game, but in real life, a whole shot of rum. So he can do as long as he can. Hopefully they can keep him alive, but this man is literally only one health. In the world of Mork Borg and Pirate Borg, if you get to zero, you go unconscious. If you go anything below zero, you just straight out die. There's no just going under and then, like, rolling to see if you die or death live. Death saves or die. whatever. No death saves. You just die if you go under zero. It's pretty hardcore. But... Before we get into the game, let's have a quick conversation between you guys in character on the topic of you guys sit down, you guys get your daily meal or probably your daily grog. And the topic that comes up is if you guys ever find a boatload of treasure, either separate or together, what will you guys do with it? What would you do with your share of the treasure? I'd buy me an island. Mm. A nice island. All to myself. With my family. You get a family. I like the Irish accent. That was pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, the, the family that I'm imagining in the future that doesn't exist. <laughs> Trust, I... did you forget to tell us that your character has an interest in attire layout? Oh, that's right. You fancy bitch. Well, no, no. I look... I'm ugly as all hell. <laughs> For whatever reason, Jack Sparrow or non-Jack Sparrow over here. Yancey. Yancey, Yancey. Sparrow. Is like the good looking handsome boy. In rags. In rags. Arr, I couldn't even afford a hat. <laughs> couldn't even afford a hat. <laughs> I have a full on wig and some fancy British clothes. But I'm the ugliest British British person you've ever seen. Covered in bugs. Covered in bugs and a couple scars. Um and that's just how I live my life. I am the fanciest dr fanciest dressed person on this boat, and I look the most important, even though I don't knew or do Jack. 
of all. Getting back to the conversation of what will you guys do if you inherit a whole ton of treasure and gold? I want an island for myself and my makeshift family in the future should I have one. Yar. Yar. Yar? Yar. 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 Well, I I tell you, I buy as much rum as a man can drink and then I'd buy two or three times that again. (laughs) I'd, uh... Alcohol poisoning, yes. I'd like to be the captain of my own ship one of these days. No drinking and sailing, my friend. Arr, I wouldn't be the sailor if I'm the captain. That's true, you would not. A little bit of a loophole there. All right, so this man is just going to get drunk and get his own ship. Me and Whiskers, Mr. Whiskers be retiring to a lovely uh, seaside shanty. Nice. If Mr. Whiskers lives at one, that is. Why are you licking your lips? Are the salt in the air glass. <laughs> <laughs> Makes everything a finer. My lips are a bit chapped, that's all. Need more alcohol to unchap them. So, after a day or two of heavy thunder and rain and wind on the seven seas, the ship... At one point, you guys exit upon the main deck of the ship. You guys are helping out with repairs of the ship, trying to fix whatever damage has been done to it by the intense weather. You guys are working together with your crew, trying to do anything possible to try to repair the ship enough that you guys can keep going and sail and hopefully get out of this horrible hurricane of a storm. The crews, although the weather is horrible, The crew's morale is up currently. You guys have been spending enough time below deck and getting to know each other that you guys treat ourselves yourselves as more than just uh, partners in crime, but just just allies and perhaps a couple of you guys even friends. But this all ends when a couple days later, when you guys exit in the morning back onto the ship to get a good start to the day. To get those sails going and to continue sailing. Right from the dark ocean beneath you, very large tentacles rise out of the water. Ones you've never seen before. You have heard the tales of the Kraken, but you've not believed it. Or maybe one of you foolish ones did. The tentacles come down, grabbing the boat in the mid-half and just pulling it straight down into the water till it bows and snaps in half. You guys exit into the water. Many drown. Some are pulled into the little whirlpool where the Kraken's mouth is. But you guys are lucky that you guys were able to get to the very back of the boat, to the poop deck, and you guys jumped off it. Okay, that's the bottom of the boat. The poop deck? Yep. No, the poop deck's at the top. Sorry. Oh, no, that, you're right. That is the, the poop deck is at the top, but it's not the back of the boat. It is the back of the boat. You're just wrong. No. It's, it's my it's, world. It's the deck. It's Regardless the if I'm deck. right or wrong, in my world, that's the poop deck. But Becky wants to know where you actually poop. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there would be one immature person here that was going to laugh at the mention of poop. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> As it turns out, there's three of us. Yeah. <laughs> You guys get to the back, you guys jump off, you land in the water. There's some um, wreckage that has broken off the ship that you guys are able to pull yourselves on and swim off. And you guys thought you guys weren't going to be able to make it, but you guys were able to uh, keep swimming, swimming. You guys fought multiple times. You guys were either going to starve, get lost at sea, or have the sharks come to get you guys. You guys, you guys were waiting for that one moment where you guys have been pulled under the water by a shark or a kraken or anything else in the dark water beneath you. But luck has it that you guys were able to keep swimming, swimming till you saw an island up ahead. This is the island that this adventure will be taking place on. This is a starting adventure that comes with a game of Pirate Borg that we'll be playing today. And the adventure is called The Curse of Skeleton Point. Welcome to our one shot with the Beer and Pretzel Podcast. You guys pull up on shore of a small island. You guys come right to a town beach, and you guys pull yourselves up. Oh, a town beach? Yeah. I walk into town, and I'm like, hells yeah, party time, let's drink. Sure. You are a pirate. That would make sense. 
you pull these folks on this beach there's a harbor right next to you i'm actually guys gonna give you guys a map to this area this is a town of coral town this is a two-sided map with they just had to divide up the name anyway doesn't matter coral town i'm giving you guys the map this is the map of the town and you guys are at the harbor at the yes. harbor there are probably around 10 or so uh ships pirate ships and other ranging from very large uh pirate war vessels to smaller rafts and you know personal dinghies Yar, so you couldn't spring for colored ink could you no it's my damn printer's not working it's so annoying i literally just got it and it's already having issues i Pirate have excuses color, if I i've ever heard of print it's just not working Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I All wish right. I could have used. I want a mid-sized vessel, or sorry, Brad should have a mid-sized vessel. He wants to be captain. <laughs> Are you the captain of this crew? I look to my left. I look to my right, and I uh, size up the uh, survivors that are with me. How many are there? There's you three. Are <laughs> I be the captain? <laughs> Four. Thank you. Mr. Whiskers is still here. He uh, survived. Thank goodness for that to last. The little rat survived, but like most of the crew in the ship did not. Well, he hasn't been eaten well, yet, so it's a good thing. That is true. He be tucked up in my little collar. Stay away All right, Captain. All right, the captain's going to lead this crew. Where are you guys going to go, or what are you guys going to do? Captain, I'd like a boat, sir, because we got to set sail. I be thinking I could use a drink after that harrowing. Escapade. I can understand a drink, but also a boat. Probably after what sure. you guys went through, probably getting back in the high seas is probably not like first on the itinerary. It Look, is first for me. But, good sir, if we go and get ourselves a drink, and perchance a we can find ourselves a boat. Or ship. Drink first, then perhaps a nap. And then maybe a boat. How about a nap on a ship? Yarr. How about a nap first? On a ship. Do you know what the fuck's wrong as with As long him? as I'm getting my drink, I don't give a damn. We right, get a drink get on a the drink. ship. Listen. Deranged. <laughs> I need a fucking drink and I need a fucking nap before we get on another fucking boat. <laughs> Look, we Mr. need a ship. Whiskers we can't been be pirates on night. dirt. I may be captain, but I'm not arguing with that, sir. <laughs> a blind pirate walking up with his cane walks Where's by you guys. Where's our first ship and drink? He puts his nose up in the air and sniffs the air you guys are in and goes, Yar, is that mermaids I smell here? You smell of salt. And a little bit of sweat and booze. Guilty. A new smell of piss, stranger. (laughs) Well, at least I don't smell like the ocean. I did not bathe myself in the ocean. I only bathed myself in my own urine. Good day to you. Is that not worse, sir? You're disgusting and I hate you. That is subjective. (laughs) And he continues shuffling off by himself. Get the fuck out of here. You guys go get the fuck out of here. (laughs) All right. What is with all these accents? I've heard fucking... You characters are supposed to be British, Travis. Where's their British accent? I don't have a British accent, but I've heard British. I've heard Italian... Or not Italian. Irish? Scottish. Italian. Scottish. (laughs) Scottish. (laughs) Scottish, Italian. I've heard whatever the fuck you're speaking of. Um, Austin was speaking a very rare dialect of Italian New Yorker. Thank you. Oh, okay, that's what that was. It is very rare in this world. <laughs> it's to be fair. very rare. It's yeah. like classic, like eighties mobster Italian, and Austin's just yeah. like, I've perfected this <laughs> yeah. one. That's one the one accent. Thing. Fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! Hey, hey fuck I'm you. walking here. All right, now that I've had my rant. Let's go on. All right. What do you three pirates do at this point? You guys are still in the harbor. You're dripping wet. Uh, you guys are very, very tired from having to swim from the ocean to the shore of this island. You I'm going to find myself a ship. I'm going to scream as the old, or not scream, but I'm going to shout out to the old man as he's walking away from us. Hey, which way to the tavern? Old he, man, which way? He goes, what did you say? 
Where can I get a drink? He goes, a drink? Ah, yar. He goes, if you want, you can go to the Green Kraken. And he points ahead and he points to where on the map is number two. And that is where the Green Kraken is. I'll be honest with you, boys. I don't got a feeling for these Green Krakens. He goes, R, there is also the treasure chest pointing to where number six is on the map. He goes, but that is more not a house of drink, but a house of drink and let's say ill respute. To the fucking treasure chest. <laughs> treasure trove, whatever the fuck it's called. The treasure chest. Well. I like her chest. Where po- oh. <laughs> You will see plenty there. Pirates don't have to have good repute. We've got ill repute. We're pirates. Let's go. All right. So you guys are going to which one? The treasure chest or the green kraken? Her treasure chest. All right. Her My crew chest. has spoken. You're a very diplomatic uh, captain. <laughs> He's also intoxicated. He doesn't care. Well, he is a pirate. All right. You guys go to the treasure chest. It is an inn and tavern. But as you guys find out very quickly by the beautiful and also the not so beautiful ladies here. It is also a brothel. Uh, going in, you guys interact with some of the crowd. You probably get some of the drink that they have. Cheap, not good, but the most important thing is that it's cheap and some of it's fairly strong. Uh, talk around to people. You guys find out that the bartender, Madame Dubois, she and her staff are renowned for their services, which are not limited to just sex work. Also spying, distracting, and rumoring. Some say that you can order more than just a lady for company and drink here, but also pay for hidden secrets. What would you guys like to do here? Don't spill the bean, guys. I'm going to look around to see if any of uh, other fine folk of the sea are playing any games of chance. There is a small group at table... Where is people rolling around dice? I'm going to saunter over and uh, pull out my bottle of rum. Uh, is there an opening at the table? There is. I'm going to sit down and I'm gonna slam down my bottle of rum and say, I want to buy in, and I'll offer to pour everybody a shot. Okay. They will let you uh, pour in and join the game. They go, R, you had us at rum. This over here, Derange? <laughs> Derange? Terrain, whatever your name is, what would you like to do? I'll go up to the bar. I'm here to get drunk like everyone else. All right. Pour me my first drink. A woman a in while. her forties and wearing a uh, dress of French, French design and stylization. Uh, she pours you a drink and she goes, she goes, "Welcome. Is this the first time to our island?" It's the first time shipwrecked here. Island, I'll give you that. She doesn't sound very pretty. <laughs> Most of them are. I... You take what you can get. Well, welcome to Black Coral Bay, then. It's oh. a very small tropical island we have here, but yes, uh, you probably could have washed ashore on better places. I mean, this place seems fine to me. Good, then I think you'll mix well along here with the locals. And she I you clearly for a don't because of my attire. She goes, yes, uh, you look like someone that should be talking with our governor. Yeah, I don't like your governor, so no. Well, you look quite like him. I know, I don't like him. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I look like him, I don't like him. She brings you the drink that you offer, but she also gives you a shot of, although lower barrel, uh, lower shelf she gives you rum for free a shot of free rum pleasures and she pours herself one and she tings her glass of you becky what would you like to do would you like to join brad over here brad would you like to join travis at the bar or brad at the table or do you, or do you want I'm to do not your own brad thing? by the way i know you pointed at me for like three uh, seconds. travis okay you join and she goes welcome the Black Coral Bay in Coral Town. I am Madame de Bois. And she goes, do you want more than just a drink? Just a drink, last, just a drink. Just a drink. All right, one drink come up. And she pours you a drink and everything. She goes, you know, I am selling rumors 
about this town for only Oh, you're selling silver. a lot more than that. Oh, we do sell more, but you seem like the kind of person that wants knowledge. I was just about to say, ma'am, not interested in your services, but rumors. 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 I can pass along a piece of information or two. How many would you like? It's ten silver apiece. Let's start with one. One? Okay. One coming right up. Roll 2d6 for which rumor it is. So I have a table of rumors here that she gives. And you gotta keep in mind that not all of these are true. These are ones that she has heard, but like any rumor, some are false. So what is your result? Nine. She goes, do you know what I heard recently? What? There's a treasure hoard in the castle protected by the ghost of a sea serpent. Ghost? A ghost. A ghost of sea serpent is what I've heard from very a reliable sea sources. Serpent? Tell me more. The castle, and she points up ahead towards the very, very back of the town. You guys see up on a hill a dark, tall, gothic castle with a ship, like, implanted in one of the towers. Like, just, that tower's just spiked up through that ship. I didn't park that there. Yeah, I don't care what you Someone did a very bad uh, parking job. I'll send you guys a picture in a second. I have a printout if I... I keep getting these pages wet with my alcohol. But anyway, uh, she points there and she says, that is where the grand treasure is said to be. Got a bad ghost. Ghost! Yeah, or another black and white portrait, eh? <laughs> Oh, they black. couldn't do color back then. Look, pirates can't afford it's ink. Black and white ink, Bradley. They didn't have uh, fucking colored pencils back then. I look at it's all about the immersion. Deranged. They also didn't have printers back then. What the fuck does it make a difference? This is drawn by her. It is not drawn by her. This is drawn by a. F- She's quite good. She's a computer. At, I look at deranged. What do you think? A next mission, eh? That'd be a good mission, but I don't want to deal with ghosts. I want a ship. Oh, you fucking little wimp! And you she don't says, want to deal with little ghosts. And she goes, there are, I believe, some ships that will be for sale in a day no, or two. But darling, if you were able to steal this gold, stop. you would be able to buy the ship. Telling I'm him about elbow. the ships. I don't need a fucking I'm, ship right now. We do need a ship. We're pirates. I'm, I'm, we're pirates, pirates and we've just been eaten by a kraken. I didn't get eaten by a kraken. I'm going to push my way between the two. I've gotten up from the uh, commotion. <laughs> oh, Yancy, good. Yeah, You're gonna, probably a little embarrassed I'm for like gonna, the new friends you made at the card table of how loud these guys I'm are. I'm going to elbow Becky uh, in the ribs. I'm going to look at the picture she's holding. I'm going to say, that's mighty good. I wonder if she'd draw us like those French girls. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, if a French girl is what you would like, we have French girls here. No, and some he of them wants even you paint. to draw him like a French girl. I, but and he's I, not a French girl. He's going to take off his little clothes and you just sit on the couch like, you know. I mean, if you want to give me a French leg. girl, I'll take a French girl. Well, well, I'm not he wants give it to, to be... you for free. He's fine. I don't have He's money, fine. so <laughs> that's all we got. <laughs> but Yancey wants you to draw him like one of them fancy girls. He and will it... take off his clothes right here. Anyway, Just a warning. I, I don't know what you're all going on about. Two rums, please. She gets you some rum and she pours them in there for you or your friends. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Yancey doesn't share. And before you leave, she says, Ten silver, a rumor. Would you like to know anything? No, but I may be back for other services later. And he takes his two shot glasses full of the strongest rum, and he leaves staggering back to his table. Uh, Travis and Becky, does your characters do anything or interact anymore with Madame Dubois, or do you guys want to move on to the next area that you guys want to go to? I mean, the area I want to go and the area they want to go is two different places. I'm good to just drink but Travis, and find a sleeping place. There's a ship. It's a little bit fuckered. You guys have to subscribe to the audience who can't see. Clearly, who about. it's a ship There's impaled a ship. on a fucking whatever deranged. that is. Deranged, deranged, darling. We can get to the ship, get the treasure, and fix the ship, and then put the ship on the ocean. Don't How do you, you love get it? the ship from the top of the castle that it's impaled onto the ocean? I don't fucking know. Do we have a crane? We'll sink the. Bl- oh, I'm not here. 
What's a crane? <laughs> What's a crane, darling? It's a pulley system that you lift stuff with. Thank they put, you. They put stuff on ships L- all the time. Listen, Mr. Whiskers and I think we can get the ship from the top of the mountain down to the ocean and call it good. It's on top of a castle. How do you get off the castle? Madame Duo, she puts her head back and she goes, well, if you were you to get the treasure, the- I will not take any sass from you. And I already then, let you took the sass. Deranged, shut then, up. How do we get off from her, Right Dallin. from beneath where uh, for a guy, the phallic image would be his dick. Instead, a shotgun gets pointed out from beneath the ball. Unfortunately, shotguns don't exist in this time period, Austin, but I respect your all, your enthusiasm. A blunderbuss. A blunderbuss. And she points at you and goes, don't help you, better, Brad. No one... <laughs> Talks against me and my own bar. Well, you fine. understand that, sir. Deranged. I am sorry. I'm a little bit tipsy. <laughs> Deranged. You can't talk nasty to the ladies of the night. She, she goes, the- I'm not a lady of the night. I, she's not I a lady of the night. Place. She's a respectable woman. I'm she sorry. She goes, uh, excuse me. My women of the night are still respectable women. I'm not saying <laughs> they're not respectable women. You're yeah, slightly you're more respectable women. I'm just saying they're women of the night. I'm trying night. to give you a compliment. Anyway. And I am not. You said I was a woman of the night. I run this place. I can see your nipples. She goes, it's just a low cutting dress. It's, it's the newest new- style. Right, under the dress. It's style, darling. Don't pretend to know it. <laughs> Quit staring at the nipples, you mangy whore. Is your character a girl or a boy, by the way? My name is Molly. I'm a girl. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was hey, unclear I about you guys' genders. Okay, so, okay. A girl and two boys. Okay. Uh, anyway, as you guys are arguing back and forth, Brad, <laughs> you're back at the table. <laughs> Let's have you roll a d6. And then... I got a three. Okay. And you were able to win about half your games, actually. So you actually probably made out with a little bit more than you put in overall. Let's, let's buy a boat. Let's say you got uh, 1d20 more silver than you start off with. Uh, that's 10 more. Okay, so 10 more silver pieces for you. We can't buy a boat. Yeah, probably not with that. All right, I'm going to saunter back to the uh, bar. Yep. After cashing out, I'm going to say, I'm going to push my way between these two. I'm going to say, clearly, uh, clearly I can tell that there's been a commotion. I'm going to say, excuse my two friends. Uh, how much for a room tonight? A room is five silver. How much Make for a two. good room, ma'am? A good room it goes between 10 and 15 silver, depending if you want company or not. We don't need company. Then 10 silver. I'll take a room for 15, <laughs> and I'll buy each of them a room for five. <laughs> and, we'll uh, take sh- a room for 10. Do you want company? Well, I mean, it's better than five, but oh, yeah, I don't need... Oh, you company. Never mind. I don't need- We're all on our own tabs. I'll take a room for 10. <laughs> Okay, ten silver pieces for you, and she gets you a nice room. What are you looking for again? For a fucking boat. She goes, I want a I ghost can't boat. Offer that. Can't offer that, she says. Ghost boat. And fifteen gold pieces for you. Yar. All right, she takes fifteen gold pieces. Or I'll pieces. take a seven piece silver <laughs> room. Seven piece chicken McNuggets. A seven, seven piece? piece. Okay, so she. I want you nicer seven. than the average. Okay. But not as shitty as the shitholes. Sounds good. She takes it and she basically puts you in one of the shitholes, but she says it's like one of the more advanced rooms. And because you don't know the difference, you just go in one of the shit rooms. And uh, before we go, I'm going to slam the two shot glasses back on the table. Yeah. Upside down. And I'm going to say, uh, pick one of these, madam. And uh, she picks the one on the right. Underneath it, she finds five silver. I say, that's your tip for the night. She looks at that and she goes, well, Han, I didn't know you were, like, we had such a wealthy businessman in town. I'm drunk off my ass and just trying to make right for my two idiot friends. Roll a presence roll, Brad. You might get two ladies tonight. (laughs) One of them might be What do I roll for that? Presence. So a d20 plus whatever your presence is. Uh, That's a negative three. (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) How do you look so good, and yet you are, like, so bad at charming? I got a six. Okay. <laughs> she basically goes, 
thank you. And she <laughs> takes the money and puts it into her blouse. Okay. All right. You guys spend the night here, and you guys are able to get your energy back, and you guys wake up the next morning. You guys spend a little bit of time in the tavern, probably getting some food and drink a little bit. They don't have anything really good, but you get a couple things before you guys head out. Uh, interacting with other pirates and other mercenaries in the tavern, you guys hear other rumors are going around on the island. Each of you guys roll your own 2d6. I get an 11. So an 11. You hear from one of the pirates going, Yar, you know the lighthouse doesn't work anymore. And his friend goes, yes, not in quite a while. Well, that's funny because recently, for three nights in a row, I've been seeing that it still lights up at night. What is the upper rumor rolls? Mine was a five. A five. Dead things don't stay dead here. You look like a new person to our small island. Be careful if you kill anything, because in a fortnight, they will be back up again, which is why we often kill things twice before they go in the grave. Or even when we have fish, we kill them twice before they go in our gullet. Can't be too sure. Can't be too sure. Six. Yar, did you hear what the governor has been propositioning? God damn, I'm not British. Fuck off. He goes, oh, I didn't assume you were. I was just saying, it's the hottest news in town right now. Have you not heard what he's been telling everyone? I have not, because I'm new, you fucking swally swabs. And you don't call me a swally swab. You're a swally swab. I know I am, but you are as well. Better not. Well, <laughs> the governor's daughter is missing, and rumor says he's paying 1,000 silver for her return. Could buy a good ship for that. Is that enough to buy me a ghost boat? He goes, R. I don't know where you can get a ghost boat, but it is a lot of coin. It'll give me a ghost boat. <laughs> <laughs> and I march off. Okay. So, guys, where do you guys want to go? Let's say as a group. Let's not ghost have boat. people split it up. There's nowhere in town that sells ghost boats. Sorry. Um. Wait till the end, Austin. Have we figured out what the other there's places a- are on the map? Uh, you probably have not. I know where you there's can a go castle. go to random places, or you can ask around town. There's a castle with a ghost boat, and I go there. Brad, you see this man just walk off towards a scary-looking <laughs> castle by himself. Do you want to join him or talk to him? Um, I'm going to let him be. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. All right, he starts walking off. It's way past. It's like through the jungle, and eventually gets to the mountains where the castle is with the ship impaled on one of the towers. Brad, while he's walking off, what would you like to do? I'm looking around town, and I found a place that looks interesting. I kind of want to see what it is or what's inside. Sure. What number is it? Number three. You go to a place called the Shipwright. And uh, I'm going to peek through the window. Peeking through the woman... Peeking through the window. Did you say peeking through the woman? Yes. He did. It's because the person runs this a woman. I was reading a line before. Oh, so he peeks through her skirt. Okay. <laughs> Not yet, lad. Not yet. I'm way away from wherever the fuck you're doing. Peeking through the window of the shipwright store. You see a you woman's see, skirt. You s- <sighs> I'm cutting all that part out, so you can't say that because it's not going to make any sense. Peeking through the window of the shipwright store, you see a strong, proud, graceful woman who runs the store. It appears that she is doing most shipwright things, so like fixing ships, adding things to ships. Um, There's stuff here to like upgrade weaponry and also just upgrade the uh, fortitude of ships. Look, I know I'm not here, Captain, but I like a cannon. Two. Um, I'm gonna, is the, I'm gonna try the door. Is it open? Yeah, it is. They're open. I'm gonna walk in and tip my non-existent hat to her. <laughs> That's true. Your character is so poor. Wait, you just have basic clothes can, and no hat. Can I tip a wig to people? Uh, you could. Dude, so I'm in, tipping If people don't tamper. know, in Pirate Borg, there's this really great stat that you roll for, which is clothing and hats. 
Do you guys want to go around quickly and say, some of you guys mentioned already, but what your clothing and hats is? I have really nice, what I equate to British clothing. And I have a British wig, which is one of those pompous, like, white yeah. British wigs. <laughs> but you're not British. Wear. But I'm not British. But I just wear that to be a dickhead. <laughs> Fair belt. Um, I've got common clothes. They're probably um, coated in salt, sweat, and blood, so and kind of ratty. And I don't even have a hat. Discount Jack Sparrow. Yeah, pretty much so. I've got an old uniform and a bandana. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's what's, pretty... Uh, what's the uniform from? Soldier uniform. It's definitely like an old naval uniform. Like, you know, well, maybe it's... Maybe that doesn't make sense because I was a cultist. You could have killed a guy. I maybe killed uniform. a guy. I probably killed a guy. Becky, Molly uh, leaves the bar in the morning and you heard your rumor for the day, right? I give it to you? Yes. yes. The undead. Uh, the undead, yes. Before her run off. This one over here is walking out of the town. He's going to go through the jungle to go all the way to the castle. He's got a little bit of a journey ahead of him, but he's heading there. This one over here, though, is going to the shipwright general store. <laughs> Where would you like to go? Do you not suck your drink any louder? Be a dickhead. It don't work. Becky, what would you like to do? Oh. Fuck, I don't know. What should you do? I went to number three. Shipwright. I was, I was gonna rob the place, but there's a lady inside. Maybe I'll seduce. Oh. Probably not. Would be a negative three? <laughs> yeah, probably not. He is quite handsome. I just, I don't know how he has no charm. He's just charm. a dickhead. That's why. I am so good looking that people are jealous of me. He is literally um, rip off fucking or discount. Yeah, discount fucking Jack Sparrow. Well, isn't your last name Sparrow? It is. Yeah. Are you related to this uh, famous Captain Jack Sparrow? I don't think I'm so much a rip off as perhaps a uh, distant cousin. Hmm. So you said you went That's to a dickhead. three? Yep. I went to the castle. Yeah, he's walking out to the jungle. Four looks interesting. Did you hear all the rumors? Have we talked amongst ourselves to know the different rumors? Uh, you probably have, right? So yeah. my rumor was that the lights were coming on in the lighthouse at night, even though the lighthouse has been out of business. I do remember that one. I was my rumor. God damn it, Travis. Your rumor, probably the most important one, is that the governor's offering a thousand silver pieces for his daughter's return. That's right. Dead or alive, the governor's offering. <laughs> <laughs> First daughter's return. Despite how interesting things look, because I'm surrounded by nincompoops. Hmm. I found my friend in the morning. What's her name? Miss Madame Dubois. Yep, Madame Dubois. Madame Dubois. <laughs> Madame Dubois. Dubois. Madame Dubois. 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 <laughs> she goes, was breakfast okay? Lovely, darling, lovely. Uh, what's this about the governor's daughter? She goes, yes, that's the heavy rumor around town. It's not a rumor, actually, at all, that he'd been putting posters around town. His daughter went missing. And he's offering a whole thousand silver pieces. And it's been getting everyone around town excited, except for those who know what happened to the last group that went looking for his daughter. What happened to the last group? No, they looking never for came back. Why? They, we they weren't very good. Yeah. Sounds Sorry, I'm not in this conversation. Good. I'm out. <laughs> well, what is the working theory? She goes, I'm not sure. I just run this place. I don't have time to deal with politics. Well, last night you're selling rumors. You're not selling rumors in the morning. Well, you haven't offered me coin. You want ten more? I would appreciate ten more. All right, here you go. All right, you pass her ten silver, and she says, the rumor is that last time they saw her, she was taking up her art supplies, and she wanted to get inspiration. And this is from a friend of hers. A friend of her friend told me, and she went to the castle to go get inspiration. The castle with the, with the with the boat in it. Yes, the cursed castle. The cursed one with the with thousand dollar prize in it. Yes. Interesting. Did you see where my friends went? 
Uh, they went out. I believe one of them was actually heading to the castle. All right, then he's in the right direction. Thank you, love. And uh, you leave and you go by and you see this one over here, Brad, peeking the window of the shipwright's um, ship store. Is it uh, open for business? It is. I'm going to walk right in. You go into the store, the shipwright's, run by a strong woman. She goes, welcome. My name is Helga. I can offer repairs, upgrades, and ammo for your ship. Okay, I'm not going to say anything for, like, five seconds. I'm just going to take an uncomfortable pause. Yeah. As I lean against the wall as she just stares at me after introducing herself so that she's forced to take in my radiance and my beauty. Of course. And then after she's about to start talking again because she's nervous in the silence, I'm going to cut in. Good day, Helga. My name is Yancy, and I'm here inquiring about a ship. I am the shipwright, and I could probably hook you up with one. What size boat or vessel were you looking for? Oh, not something too large. Of course. Uh, nothing that would, uh, call into question one's, uh... What, What is it when guys get the really big trucks, uh... Overcompensation. Overcompensation. <laughs> I'm going to hint that I would like a uh, small but fast vessel. Maybe something that could hold a crew. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna roll to try and say something impressive. Okay, so you roll presence, I guess. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you're totally fine with the negative three penalty. Roll the 18, so that's a 15. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, she's impressed by your limited knowledge about boats. My, my seamanship. <laughs> your seamanship, <laughs> if you will, yes. He says, it's not the size of the vessel, it's the motion of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is him in a nutshell. She says, well, probably for what you would be looking for, I think a common sloop would be good. No, 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 love. Not a... Uh, Are you something... inherited Becky's British voice? I don't think you were talking oh, no, like no, this no. before. <laughs> you know, the, the, the sea is a melting pot, Austin. Yeah. Everybody just kind of blends together. That's true. Um, Maybe. I was hoping you might have something a little more unique. Something a little special. Indeed. I... Like what? Oh, I don't know. I was just uh, taking a gander today, but I've heard that uh, you have the best. I do. In fact, although I do not own it, I do offer the very, well, although it is a heavy price to pay, I have information that leads to an empty ghost vessel. Hmm. Uh, I'm... Consider me intrigued. She goes, you'll be intrigued, but not until I tell you the price. What's the price, my fine lass? 1,500 silver pieces. 1,500 and... But the boat is worth way more than that. But it's up to grabs for anyone that can get it. Who's sailing it? No one. It's currently harbored away, although I will not give you any hints about where. Who's selling it? Is it on the top of the castle? No one. No one. The price is finding it and actually trying to take control of it. And, of course, my finder's fee of 1,500 silver pieces. I'm just going to bat my eyelashes at her <laughs> okay, and say, surely you can come down a, a smidgen on the price. She goes, this is a ghost ship. No one knows this information but I. And she will not go down the price. But, Trust, you want to be any fucking louder with that? But uh, I think he needs more. No, he needs less. <laughs> but, my beautiful, and I'm going to give her a moment to take in my radiance. <laughs> Can't you just imagine the two of us sailing together on the ghost ship? How wonderful it would be. Roll one more presence roll, Brad. I rolled a natural one. Oh, I have no! a minus three, so <laughs> negative two. She goes... That flirtation means nothing to me. Get out of my store. <gasps> Only we return to my store if you have 1,500 silver pieces. Well, 
Darling, I've only got 60. <laughs> 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 All right. You um, meet up with Becky or Molly. What's uh, your full name? I am Anka Molly. You meet up with Molly outside. Molly Ringworm, as we call her. <laughs> I am Anka Molly, you fucking trollywog. <laughs> I'm just making up curse words at this point. <laughs> Yes. You guys be up outside. Where is deranged? I've got information he'll find appealing. I don't know. He's deranged. He's off doing his deranged thing. What do you think he's doing? I was told to find you here. The fuck? I was told by Madame Dubois <laughs> that I find you here. I've only had two rums. You can't keep up with me, darling. Well, let's go and find Deranged. All right, you guys will spend time looking for Deranged, which is a perfect opportunity to go over to him. Deranged, you are making your way through the jungle. Do I find my castle? <laughs> no wonder we can't find him. Yeah. Uh, you make it through the jungle eventually, and you do make it up to the castle. Up ahead, you see a thin bridge that goes over a chasm that eventually leads over to the castle. In front of this bridge, though, is a man that wears priest robes. And he stands in front of it, holding a Bible in one hand, a cross in the other, holding up high, and facing the castle. What would you like to do? I walk up behind him. (laughs) <laughs> you walk up behind him and he is startled and he goes oh I'm sorry I did not see you there all good mate and he goes do you want the boat too as well no I hope to drive out all the evil that pertains inside this cursed dome I just want the boat if you want to drive out the cursed evil that's fine I just want to set sail on the boat he goes that boat that boat <laughs> Uh, The one you're pointing to. Don't you think that has kind of a wee bit of a hole? Uh, She is a fine craft, good sir. And she will set sail tomorrow. Uh, With a little bit of TLC. I wish you plenty of luck. (laughs) And he steps aside to let you through. And as you pass by, he does like the the Father and the Holy Ghost little dashes on his uh, chest. You mean the cross? Yeah, the cross. (laughs) That's the word I was looking for giving you a blessing before you go through. I appreciate the blessing, good sir. I shall set sail tomorrow. All right. Uh, Brad and Becky, you guys are going to be going through to try to find this one over here. By rolling a presence, you guys... I am just this one over here. I'm not even a person anymore. I'm just this one. You can't even remember your own fucking name. How am I supposed to remember your name? They keep calling me deranged. Just call me that. All right, Derange. You guys are trying to look for Derange. Mm-hmm. Uh, presence in this game is not only charm, but it's also perception. So roll a whatever skill I just told you to do. Presence. presence. Yeah. Oops. 17. 17? Okay. You are able to lead Brad because probably he was not going to get a 17 with his negatives. Come along, darling. But he could definitely I'm going to roll really quick. I got a nine. So, okay, I'll... Okay. Minus three, that's probably not a nine. No, it was a 12 minus three is nine. Oh. You are able to search around and talk to people. You heard that this one right here decided to go on the castle alone. He's a bit deranged. That is his name. And you follow him through the it's jungle, <laughs> and you do see him walking down the bridge about to get to the castle. And like I said before, there is the older man, uh, old robed a wizard of a man, um, who looks like a priest standing in front of the bridge. What would you guys like to do? I'm going to keep going. Follow my friend. Brad, are you following behind Molly? Sure am. The priest goes, hold up there, hold up there, hold up there. He goes, are you going to the castle alone? We're trying to get our friend before he goes in. He goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. That place is cursed have you heard (laughs) so are we (laughs) clearly are you strong combatants or are you fools we're fools all right then you can go ahead i have no need of ye thank you darling but good sir we have need of ye and you'll be coming with us he goes 
I am only going there once night falls. All right, then we can wait a bit. We but, can wait but, a bit. But your friend up there cannot wait, apparently, though. Deranged! Isn't that what they would expect of you, good sir? Deranged! I have to drive out the evil, and the evil mostly comes at night. So, till night, I shall wait. And I'm trying to take anyone with me. Anyone that joins me and is able to help me clear out this cursed castle, I will personally make sure the governor rewards you. Well, what kind of curse is this? Are we talking Cthulhu? Are we talking ghosts? Bleed, talking? Bleeding out of our eyes and arses? Or? Because, like, I've only got one good eye left. <laughs> No, 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 no. nothing like that. More like the dead (laughs) shall walk again. Oh, I heard that that rumor. Uh, fuck. What is that? You heard derange. You look over and you see on the other side of the bridge, you see these two and the priest. I wave in contempt. I'm like, yeah, my brethren. <laughs> Come back. And then I, I point to the boat and I start heading towards the boat. I'm going to shout out, we found a ghost boat for you. <laughs> I instantly turn around turning back. <laughs> He's you walk like, over the bridge. U-turn. Like I just, I don't make it over the bridge. I'm like halfway and I just U-turn. Just and like, do that U-turn as soon as you could. You just rotate yourself and just As head soon back. as I hear ghost boat, I'm like, You do yes. like a power walk back. Yes. I'm like, ghost boat. You make it back to these guys. And guys, he just it's- comes up to you guys, goes, ghost boat.